This Red Sox prospect has been a one man Kang machine. <laughs> What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin and there's a lot of talk about the Red Sox not having any pitching prospects. While they may not have any top 100 pitching prospects, it's not entirely true that there's no exciting prospects in the Red Sox farm system. And one of the goals on this channel is to start highlighting some of the young, talented pitching prospects that are making their way through the Red Sox system at this very moment. And today we are highlighting one guy who has been a strikeout machine since getting into the Red Sox farm system he's a guy who could be shaping up to be an important piece of the future of this Red Sox bullpen we're going to be talking about what he's done so far this year why people are calling him a strikeout machine and why he's able to get so many strikeouts why he's become an exciting prospect and we're going to talk about what his future on the Red Sox could look like his ceiling his floor what he needs to work on all that great stuff but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. The prospect we are talking about today is a 24 year old right handed relief pitching prospect for the Boston Red Sox by the name of Christopher Troy. Troy was drafted in the 2021 draft in the 12th round. He was the fourth pick of the 12th round of the draft. He was a pretty late pick for the Boston Red Sox. Now, he's had a fairly successful minor league career so far, but in 2023, he really impressed a lot of people. He started 2023 in high A, where he did not spend a ton of time, but he still did manage to get into 14 games and pitched 18 and one thirds innings during that time. Now in that time frame, Christopher Troy had a really impressive 1.96 ERA, but a much higher and explainable 3.46 FIP, which indicated that he really wasn't pitching up to what his ERA said, but there's a reason for that. And we're gonna talk about that in one second. What was really impressive about this performance was obviously, as the title of video says, as what we talked about in the intro, his strikeout numbers. During that time frame those 18 and one third innings, Christopher Troy was rocking an 18.16 K per nine and struck out 48.7% of the batters he faced. That is almost half of the guys that stepped into the batter's box. Christopher Troy was sitting them down strictly on the strikeout. That is extremely, extremely impressive to do, even if it's just for 18 and one thirds innings. Now there was a bit of concern over Chris Troy's walk rate during this time. It was sitting at around 4.42 per nine and about 11.8% of the time that he was on the mound. Now, this doesn't seem like a super big number, but when you're averaging about one and one thirds innings every single appearance, every single walk counts, and that's more than likely what was dragging his FIP up, right? Because he had a low opponent batting average, he wasn't giving up a ton of hits, he was striking a lot of guys out, but those walks is what really brought in and inflated that FIP. So while there were some concerns at the low A level, it was still an impressive enough start to the 2023 season that the Red Sox felt as though he was ready to make the biggest jump in the minor leagues, which is high A to double A baseball. Double A is where Christopher Troy finished out the rest of his 2023 season, and he did really, really well. During 24 games and 31 innings pitched, he had a much higher 3.77 ERA, but this time around, his FIP was much lower than what it was in high A baseball. It was also much lower than it was in double A baseball, sitting at 2.86. So he pitched much better at double A than his actual ERA led on. It was a bit of an inflated ERA is what they call it when your FIP is that much lower. But either way, it's not really a bad ERA, especially for someone who's getting their first taste of double A baseball, which like I mentioned, the high A jump to the double A jump is the biggest minor league jump outside of obviously whenever you get to major league baseball. On top of that, he also had an opponent average of just 174 in those 31 innings, and he was able to generate a ground ball rate of 45.9 percent of the time, which is what a majority of his contact ended up being, which is a very good sign, right? If you're a pitcher that can get a lot of strikeouts and keep the ball on the ground, that's a recipe for success. His K rate also stayed really impressive at 34.7%. So maybe it's not that once every other batter type strikeout rate, but that is still a really impressive strikeout rate. If you 
you're thinking about it per inning, right? Three batters minimum to face you per inning. That's a bare minimum of one batter struck and out every single inning that you pitch. And that's a really impressive statistic. He also finished with a 14.52 K per nine, but his walk rate also took a big jump. He finished 2023 with the Portland Sea Dogs with a 7.84 walk per nine and walked about 18.8% of the batters he faced. There are obviously two big standout stats when we're looking at what Christopher Troy was able to do in 2023, right? One of them good and one of them not so good. And the good one is obviously the theme of this video, and that is his strikeout rate. Christopher Troy has a couple of different factors that are playing into his big strikeout numbers in 2023. According to SoxProspects.com, your home for everything Sox prospect related. Christopher Troy has a bit of a jerky, slightly complicated motion towards the plate in his delivery that could be deceptive towards batters. You combine that with his great extension and his arm slot slash angle the ball is coming in at, he is a really, really deceptive delivery that throws a lot of batters off and makes it difficult for them to pick up different spins and different locations on the mound, which has led to a lot of swing and miss. So his delivery itself has been a bit of a weapon this year, but outside of just the delivery, Christopher Troy also has an extremely great fastball. It sits around 96 miles an hour, but it's topped out at 98. I'm not sure if he's ever hit triple digits in a game. That's something you'll have to ask him, but we do know that that fastball is very quick. It also has a lot of rising movement later in the zone, which is exactly what you want when you're missing bats, especially from the extension and arm angle that he has. If if he plays it up in the zone, he tends to get a lot of swing and misses under the ball or with weak contact attached, which has also led to a lot of swing and miss, obviously, and obviously it has helped inflate his strikeout rate. On top of that too, he also has a curveball and a slider. Now, neither of those pitches have really been labeled as a deceptive offering as something that really is a plus offering in terms of swing and miss ability, but they do a great job of keeping hitters off balance, right? If you are focused in on that 98 coming at you high and inside, you're probably going to let the low and outside slider drop or the by the knees curveball, which helps them sneak in a strike or two here or there. So not only is his arsenal pretty good and good enough to get a lot of swing and misses at the double A level, which is pretty impressive, but his delivery itself is herky, it's jerky, it's kind of all over the place and it helps him really throw batters off in their timing and their perception of pitches coming in from the mound. The other obvious standouts statistic outside of the strikeout rate is very clearly the walk rate, right? It is extremely high, especially in double A. It was an extremely high number and it helped lead to that really inflated earned run average where it felt like he was pitching much better than that. But because there were always men on base, there was always going to be run scored or it was always going to inflate his earned run average. And this is actually something Christopher Troy has been struggling with throughout his minor league career. He's gotten a bit better at it, but he still has issues commanding the strike zone and controlling his pitches within the strike zone. So what could that look like on the Boston Red Sox? What does his ceiling look like? What does his floor look like? And what could his impact on this team be? Right now, when we're talking about Christopher Troy's potential impact, most scouts have him as sort of an up and down type reliever role, right? Maybe that quad A type pitcher where you see him a few times a year here. You know, he fills in for injuries. He fills in down the stretch when other relievers are starting to get tired, but his ceiling is somewhat of a setup man in in Major League Baseball. That sort of late inning, high leverage type reliever, that guy who comes in in the seventh and the eighth and gets you to your closer. That's sort of what Christopher Troy's role here could be on the Boston Red Sox if he lives up to his full potential. And a lot of this makes sense, right? Because we're talking about a pitcher who could get a lot of strikeouts, but can't command the zone very well. That sounds like a guy who's going to run into a lot of issues when he gets to Major League Baseball, but that potential to be something a bit more special is there, right? Christopher Troy is a guy who's been able to limit a lot of hard contact. He did not give up a single home run in double A this year. He keeps averages low and he strikes a ton of guys out. If he can put together some semblance of command or control, he could really be a dominant late inning pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, which would be absolutely awesome to see. And that's why we're focusing on making a video on him today because he has a lot of that potential. He also has a great mindset as well. Christopher Troy is one of the most outspoken Red Sox prospects within the system right now. He's on Twitter almost every day sharing his perspective of what minor league baseball is really like, talking about his mentality going into games, how he's preparing. It's very clear to see just strictly based on what's coming out of his mouth that this dude is 
dedicated to his craft and that he's determined to make an impact whether that be on the boston red sox or somewhere else and that's a great asset to have right sometimes your mind could be your biggest weakness but it could also be your biggest strength and with christopher it feels like the latter is the case right now christopher troy is still a pretty far ways away from major league baseball right he did spend a pretty significant time in double a though this year and he is playing in the arizona fall league throughout the fall of 2023 which could help push him towards major league baseball realistically if you're talking about timelines here as to when you could see chris in the back end of that bullpen on the red sox 26 man roster i would probably guess 2025 but if he does do pretty well during the arizona fall league which he's starting off really well doing i don't think he has an earned run yet and he comes into 2024 a bit more poised a bit more controlled and has a good first half to the 2024 season i could see him promoted fairly quickly i could also see him being a guy we talk about to bring up when rosters expand in 2024 to hopefully help this team continue pushing forward towards a playoff spot but that's an entirely different story either way christopher troy right now is a pretty long distance away from major league baseball when you break it down a little bit more this is a guy who could be an impact type reliever in the near future which is pretty exciting to say right relievers tend to be a bit faster to major league baseball than starters obviously right there's less innings for them to pitch in minor leagues and there's less things to work on i guess overall when you're talking about being in a rotation for the red sox versus being in the bullpen for the red sox so we could see christopher troy pretty quickly here over the next couple of years now again is christopher troy a top 100 prospect no is he ever going to be a all-star cy young candidate probably not but this is a guy who's an exciting prospect right now who could have an impact on the red sox bullpen maybe take over for chris martin maybe end up being that sort of late inning seventh eighth inning guy that you desperately need in 2025 and 2026 to get you to a dominant closer and he's a fun guy to root for right he's a guy who is very passionate about the game he's a guy who really loves what he's doing and that's always a fun guy to root for plus again the potential is there to be a legit impact player that's just my opinion so let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of this prospect what do you think of the strikeout machine christopher troy let me know what you think his future could look like let me know what you think his ceiling could look like let me know what you think about the red sox pitching prospect christopher troy in the comment section down below as always if you made it to the end of this video do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one and i will see you in the red seats.